tell you, if you want something hard to photograph or videotape, try contours in the middle of the woods. What I want to talk to you about is my desire to put some sort of water feature on our property, and actually multiple water features, specifically some dams. And with those, small pools of water going throughout the property. Some of them larger than others, but mostly small. Now, if you read any kind of water harvesting book or permaculture, uh, you're going to read a lot about trying to capture rainwater and slow its progress as it travels across the land so that more of it soaks into your land before it finally ever reaches an exit point. And that is what I'm looking at doing here. I did my best to try to show you the, the contour of the land by putting these blue survey marker flags in. And they go along the ridge of the uh, rut that's right here as well as in the center where the water actually flows. There's probably about a three and a half to four at the highest foot um, erosion that has happened here and I don't know how well I can dam this area up. Number one, I don't have any experience in building dams and I have to assume that it's a little more complicated than I would expect and that done wrong all you do is cause problems for yourself. I'm also concerned that if you notice in the background you can see the horizon. I don't think that there's very much land that feeds this yet at the same time it's well worn out so I'm not sure. Um, best I would think is maybe two acres of water would actually shed off in this direction but with as much gully as this is created who knows. Let me show you another one. Okay so here's another area that I found you can tell this one's got a much wider mouth um, so I imagine it just even be harder to try to dam up it's also a lot more shallow, but it was the best example I could come up with right now. I haven't been able to explore every single inch of the property, so there might be another example later. But I think you can probably see what my biggest concern is. I am in the middle of the woods. Despite being able to find these uh, ravines like this, I have to do a lot of clearing just to get to this so that I can even try to make it a dam. So, I'm caught between that rock and a hard place of wondering, you know, is it really worth it? The amount of damage that I have to do, and, and we may clear most of this out anyway. Some of it's older growth, uh, which is probably humorous to those of you who live in much more forested areas, but for our property, some of it's more older growth, uh, but a lot of it's just, you know, two inches or less, and I drive right over. Somebody's been off chasing squirrels. But anyway, I just don't know where the, the benefit to cost ratio is really going to be with trying to do this. So let me show you the more obvious options. All right, got to take you on a handheld tour for this one. This is where it seems obvious. Uh, we have runoff water coming into our property from two different locations, from the main road and also from a pond that is two properties over whose spill-off goes through the property just north of us and then on to, on to ours. And in this area is actually where they have already combined. But here's why it's more obvious. I mean, you can see the rut that this has caused over the years. Uh, that is about four foot deep. And this is one of the places in the property where in times gone by somebody has installed a culvert <clears throat> and a vain attempt to have a crossing passage there's where the water actually comes in at and you won't be able to see it in the video but here in this dense of trees middle screen that little creek actually makes a sharp 90 degree bend off to the left of the camera and this clump of trees if it were not there and the dirt was dug out could easily be turned into about a four foot deep pond but boy does that look like a lot of work. Let me show you the other uh, inlets for this running water. I thought it would be worth it to show you this. This is uh, the convergence where the true two tributaries, if you will, come together. To the right is a runoff from the road. To the left, if you can see the, the gully, I don't think you'll make out the running water, 
is the runoff from the pond on the adjacent properties. But when they come together, this does get dry in the midst of the summer. But I think that if we can better control the water, we can make it so it's never dry. That's what I want to do. Well, if you follow on Facebook at all, or on Google+, you've seen this before. This is our little waterfall. <laughs> Stick across the path that turned into a waterfall. And uh, this is the inlet for where the water from that adjacent pond comes from. And this isn't where it first comes into our property. That's much further back off in the woods over here. But the point I want to make to you is that this land is flat other than it's coming in on the property about oh 300 feet off in the woods that direction there is nowhere pre-designed to try to dam this up without making a heck of a dam now, i'm talking about a good 20 foot tall dam and because that's about how high it's going to be to get me to the top of the ridge over there so my initial thought is it wouldn't be too bad to dig this out. Again, this is an area where there was previously installed a culvert to walk over this. It goes off that direction about another 200, 300 feet to where I showed you that the uh, two water sources combine. But this doesn't stay nearly as active as the road, road runoff. Let me show you that. Now this area is well overgrown, so right now you're not going to be able to see the water too well, but it's right there in the middle of the screen. And it comes off the road about 100 foot in that direction. Uh, the road being right there. <clears throat> so this is a bit of a bowl. Uh, there may be a way for me to dig out a little but also just work with the natural contours of the land. One problem is our driveway. It would effectively turn my driveway into the levee. And I'm not so keen on that. Because our driveway is already a bit of a bowl, as you can see from the water that pooled up in the ruts there. We have a very large culvert going under our driveway and lets the water out on the other side here where you can see there's kind of that uh, I forget what the proper term is but that shotgun effect of the water causing this divot and then it goes off in its own direction that way and in a good rain this entire area here is almost swamp uh, it will after about a hundred foot into the woods um, this ravine is, doesn't have as steep of a wall and you can go back about 100 foot in the woods there and you can see I don't know a couple dozen different paths that the water prefers to take also coming of course off of the uh, runoff just from the hill and not from what comes out of our culvert so these are the main inlets how did you like seeing my daughter's little garden shovel down here by the water that's what you get when you raise kids in the country so if this is the most obvious place to try to capture the water, why don't we just do it here? Well, there are several different reasons. Number one, the road. We don't want to dam up this area and make a pond out of it and that be where we attract the ducks to. So if this is the place where the most water is coming onto our property, why don't we just do the obvious thing and try to dam up the water here first? Well, there's a couple different reasons for that. The first one is the road. We don't want to create a body of water next to the road and that be where the ducks migrate to. We want to create a body of water in the back of the property and attract the ducks' attention back there. Uh, we don't need the ducks wandering in the road getting hit by vehicles and everything that comes along with that. So even if we ever do dam up this area, it's certainly not going to be the first place that we do it. Second, this is obviously runoff from the road. It can't be the cleanest water out there. But at the same time, I have heard and read in numerous places that crawdads or crayfish don't 
uh, live in polluted waters and yet you can find them right here in this little pond so I don't know what to make of that also in permaculture we try to capture the water at its highest elevation and then slow its progress to the lowest elevation this is just about as low as the elevation gets there's probably only about a, a five to ten foot change from right here to the very back of the property a thousand feet away where this finally goes off and I say a thousand it's probably longer than that as the water flows so it kind of hurts my feelings to capture it at this low of an elevation but I just might not have a choice let me know what you guys think if it were your property what kind of things would you be thinking about what direction do you feel like you might go with what you know thank you all for watching we'll see you next time